Hi, I'm Shikhar Ghosh. I'm a professor at Harvard Business School. Before coming to Harvard, I was an entrepreneur for about 25 years, started a number of companies, raised money several times, took a company public. Since then, I've been investing in a number of companies, both with VCs and individually as an angel. So I've been on both sides of the process of raising money. In a lot of pitching workshops, what you'll get is some really good advice about how to structure a presentation. So it'll tell you what the flow of the narrative should be. It'll tell you how many points there should be, what the colors should look like, how many words in a slide. And the problem with approaching it that way is that what you're doing is packaging up something that could be complete, but it doesn't feel substantial. And the reason is because a pitch is really a summary of where you are in the business. The strongest pitches are backed by really strong businesses and strong conviction on where you're going. And so in this workshop, what we're going to do is use a 6P framework. But the framework is about pitching, and it's also about creating the business. And so the linkage between how you create your business and what the pitch looks like is a really tight linkage. And the stronger your business is, the stronger your understanding of what you're trying to do is, the better the pitch will be. In the last workshop, we talked about the importance of establishing an emotional hook to get somebody to want to invest in what you're doing. In this workshop, we're going to take the next step and talk about what happens after they're interested in investing. What are the additional things that you have to do to get them to take that leap forward? So once an investor is interested, what they want to know is, can you get from where you are today to the promise of the business? And this is ent entirely a process of finding the uncertainties that are critical and finding ways to overcome that uncertainty. So what an investor does is they start off by saying, you know, here are a set of assumptions that have to be true for this business to be valid. And what you do is through your process, you're constantly finding ways to lower those uncertainties. And at each step, the investor gives you a higher valuation and gives you more money because they have more certainty that you can get to, to the ultimate goal. The three ways in which you can do this are you have proof. So you've come up, you've got some initial data, you've got people who are interested, you've got retailers who have had some tests, you've built a prototype and you know what the cost of it is. Each one of these activities is taking away some uncertainty from the whole set of uncertainties that comes in. The second thing you do is you don't have the proof, but you have a process for getting to that proof that you're not going to build a store, you're going to build a mock-up. You're going to have a prototype that you're going to try with a few people and it's only going to cost you $100,000 instead of a million dollars to build the actual product. And then the final one is that even though you're starting the product and doing all of your testing with a group of early adopters, that you have figured out all the pillars of profitability so you can say that this business is going to be big enough for a venture or small enough to make a profitable investment for an angel investor, but that the whole thing is going to work together. Let's take, um, let's take a simple example of a company uh, that was created almost 30 years ago, the spin brush. So you have electric toothbrushes and you have manual toothbrushes. And John Osher came up with the idea of saying, what if I could do an electric toothbrush for $5 um, instead of 50? So imagine you are an investor who's looking at this and you say, well, if I could make an um, electric toothbrush for, for $5, and if millions of people decided to use it, and if I could have a cost of goods of $2 or so, then this would be a great business. But on the first day that he goes out and tries to raise money against it, all of these things are just big questions. And so what he has to do is find out what are the top questions in an investor's mind. Is it about retailing? Is it about whether the child will use it? Is it about whether the mother or the parent who's buying the toothbrush will actually buy it? Uh, is it about the cost of manufacturing? And each of those uncertainties, he's got to find a way to lower that uncertainty and to find a way that the investor gets more confidence in their ability so that they give him money to, to reduce that uncertainty more. Most people, when they, when they do a presentation, they present a lot of information on the proof that they have created so far that the idea is valid, that users want it, um, and so on. And there are two problems that usually come up. The first problem is that the 
question that they're answering, the uncertainty they're trying to resolve, is not the same one that's in the investor's mind. That they're trying to say that children will love this toothbrush when in fact the investor is worried about whether retailers will give it shelf space or not. Um, the second problem that they run into is their version of proof, their version of the test they've run, are not the same thing that the investor would find compelling. So they've talked to 10 of the neighborhood children who've all loved the toothbrush because it looks like a lollipop, uh, and the investor doesn't believe that the child is the, is the, is the proof point or that 10 neighborhood kids in an affluent neighborhood are the right way to do it. And so all this effort that you've spent gathering the proof uh, is not that useful because it's not convincing the investor that you've actually resolved the uncertainty. So in this exercise, what we're going to do is start by your identifying what are the key uncertainties that you think an investor would see in your proposition.